Now today I'm going to plant the zinnias because look they're starting to flower in their trays but the garden's full up however there's nothing in the polytunnel and the zinnias won't mind the heat so I think rather than waste a single inch of my garden that's where I'm going to put them. Now, as it's almost three o'clock, the chances are I am not going to finish the planting today. That's fine. I can make a start and then finish it tomorrow. So job number one. Now I've got all the plants up here ready and I've got quite a few. I'm doing a bit of a trial. What I'm doing is I'm combing through and I'm checking for watering. So this tray here, can you see these three plants are a bit paler than all the rest. Now, when I check them, the cells were quite dry compared to the others. And if the cells are dry, they can't take the nutrients from the compost and that can make them hungry. So what I'm going to do, I've got some fertilizer here, which is for feeding the soil, but it is quite slow release. So I'm going to feed the soil and that replaces the nutrients that the ranunculus took earlier on in the season. But in addition, I'm going to do a quick fix now. This is tomato food. I've got a little jug because not all the cells will need watering just these three in the case of this tray so the tomato food will get to work straight away and then once they're planted the slow release fertilizer will feed them for the rest of the season and hopefully they'll be a little bit more uniform once they're planted in the ground so i've got another tray here and some of the cells are fine but some of them are very dry look at that so i've got my little jug of water and I'm going to water the individual cells. They're in a tray but only to catch the surplus as it runs through because I'm very mean like that and I don't want to waste my plant food. Don't leave your zinnias soaking in a tray of water. They do not like a soggy bottom and try and keep the tomato food off the foliage because sometimes that can make your plants turn blue. Just they get splodges on the leaves which can be a bit unsightly so you don't want that. There we go, all watered and then straight out of the tray. They'll be perfectly happy here for the night now. Now, earlier on in the season, we pinched our zinnias and they've now branched beautifully. So I wanted to show you two, one that I've pinched and one that I haven't. So here we go. I've turned the camera around for you and you can see if you look, there's the wound where I originally pinched this in here and I've got three stems now instead of just the one. And this in here, here has not been pinched. So you can see the leaves are much larger and the plant is putting all of its energy into just the one stem. But I find that that can make the zinnias a bit too big and clumsy for my garden and also for arranging. So I've got a seedling here, which is just about to flower. And I just wanted to explain about apical dominance. So apical comes from apical bud. So the top shoot is called the apical bud and the side shoots here are called the lateral buds. And you can see we do have side shoots, but they are rather underdeveloped. And that is because the plant is inhibiting their growth in favor of the top shoot, the apical shoot, apical dominance. When we remove the apical bud, the top part of the plant when we snip that out that removes the hormone which is responsible for suppressing the uh, development of the lateral buds and they are able to then grow so we remove the apical bud removing the apical dominance and then the lateral buds will grow from there Now, a couple of things to remember is number one, it does delay flowering. So you can see the stem that I pinched, that's now gone. And we've had to wait for the lateral buds to wake up and take over. Now, because it's quite early in the season, that's fine, we've got plenty of time. But that stem is gone. So we've actually only got two extra stems, not three extra. So you just need to remember that. 
Now, not all plants are suitable for pinching. For example, the stocks will only flower once per stem, so you don't want to pinch that because that will be your flower gone. The cornflowers are naturally branching plants, so you want the thickest, biggest flowers at the beginning of the flowering season, so we don't pinch the cornflowers. And I also, controversially, uh, try not to get you to pinch your sweet peas because again, the plant is a natural, it's a vine it's naturally branching. So we want the tallest, longest stems for our floristry at the beginning of the season. We will cut those flowers and then the plant will start branching naturally anyway. And each time it does that, it diverts the energy and the stems get shorter and thinner. Now, if you want a list, if you ever order any of my handbooks, when we're doing the grow along, there is a quick reference checklist, which gives you key information. Pinching is one of them. I thought you might like to see how I'm getting on and I'm planting the zinnias 22 centimetres apart. Now I've got a couple here that are just on the cusp of blooming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let them flower and then pinch them out because I haven't got around to doing it yet. Now don't be too delicate when pinching out zinnias. They're a bit deaverish. So if you take out, for example, just the very tip, then they've got a terrible habit of just then waking up one side shoot and just making that grow. So you need to take out a good chunk. So the best thing to do is if it's about to flower, is let it flower and then it will be less painful to take out a nice big chunk of the stem. There you go, I've got one for you. So I did pinch it out, but really delicately. Let's put that there. So literally what I did is I just did that. And then what happened is you can see where it's been pinched. <laughs> it's still got apical dominance rather than that you need to do that now of course you don't have to pinch zinnias at all you can leave them I said I can find a photo from my library in a second to show you what they look like if they're not pinched but there we go so hopefully that will give you a bit of confidence and then you can see the results of the pinching don't sow any zinnias now by the way do not sow zinnias now they will not flower until literally the end of the season they'll be really annoying There we go. I was determined that I was going to get this finished today. I've watered everything in really well. Now, ideally with zinnias that you don't water the foliage if you can help it because they can suffer from botrytis. However, the conditions are anything but warm and humid at the moment. And you can see I've literally just stopped watering a few seconds ago and the foliage is almost dry already. So that's fine. But what I will do is I'll just put some slug pellets down, some organic slug pellets because you can tell just by looking at them that slugs and snails are going to find these caviar and if you don't protect them and you do have a slug problem then they can be stripped overnight and after all this beautiful growing you don't want that to happen.